Hi friends, welcome to Ignite Digital 2021. My name is Ian Khan and I'm your keynote speaker today. It's such a pleasure and honor to be part of this conference that does so much. It's not just about bringing people together and, 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 and talking about a few things, but it's about bringing a community together and leading the future. It's, it's literally stepping into the future together. And so for that reason, I'm already sold. I love this conference and thanks for having me and supporting it by being here. With that, the next 45 minutes of your time with me are going to be all about the future. But in order to understand the future, we have to understand how we got here. And we also have to understand where do we live? What is this world that we live in? What impacts it? And what are the things that are shaping our present and tomorrow, the future? You'll find some of my films on Amazon Prime, on YouTube, on other platforms, on, on airlines, uh, such as Emirates and, and Fly Dubai. So please watch those films if, uh, if you're flying on these airlines or you're on Amazon. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to collaborate with a lot of people, write some books, um, teach at universities, and, and be one of these people who just instigates uh, and stirs the pot. And, and I have big pleasure in doing that. And when I speak to others at conferences and events, it's all about how do you get leaders to think differently and maybe share one, two, five, ten different insights that can help them understand, that can help them take the next step. So it's all about you. And I'm, I'm just here to facilitate maybe some of your thinking. So let me start off by this. Uh, a fact and a stat that uh, Forbes magazine mentioned a few years ago. Uh, and Forbes said this about the accounting industry. Uh, I don't know how many of you today in the audience are from the accounting industry, but financial industry, financial services, accounting, any services industry, uh, we all have a huge connection with accounting because it powers business. And so Forbes magazine said that by the year 2020, or the 2020s, which we are in right now, uh, technology will disrupt the accounting in industry in such a way that has never been done in the last 500 years. Now, accounting is a profession which is about 500 years old. Uh, and uh, in fact, that is happening right now. The truth is, in accounting, manufacturing, financial industries, retail, every industry is facing uh, some kind of disruption, some kind of change that's happening as a result of everything that's happening in the world. And so I wouldn't hold this true just about the accounting industry anymore, but every industry right now is undergoing an unprecedented amount of change. So let's do this. Let's do a quick countdown. So this is the year 2021. We are in uh, the end of the year, so it's, time has passed really, really fast. This is what has happened. Uh, the first industrial steam engine uh, was uh, invented or created about three, 300 years ago. And it's been three uh, millennia since uh, three centuries. It's been three centuries since this technology revolutionized what people did. And this was the first industrial revolution. Uh, the World Wide Web is about three decades old, 30, 35 years old, and it's been out here in the world changing lives. There's many countries today, they still don't have access to the internet. And, and so there's a lot of disparity, but that's, that's the truth. Three decades plus, we've been using the internet. Uh, the iPhone, or many of the smartphones that we use, generally speaking, iPhone is, is the one that came out first. It's about 12 years old. And it's really surprising how this one device has changed everything that we do. So let's now talk about some of the things, exciting things that have happened in the last, say, one year. And I want to bring it here. I, I want to start, I want us to understand where we are. So the first thing I want to talk about is the billionaire space race. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard it by now that uh, multi-billionaires are now trying to conquer space. And there's a race to, to go to space first, to create space tourism, to enable a new industry, and there's many ideas that are being floated. Uh, you know, colonize Mars, colonize the moon, uh, mine asteroids for precious metals. Incredible, big, big, big mega ideas uh, that some people are following. And so you have um, people like Elon Musk, uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, Sir Richard Branson, who are essentially in this race to conquer space. I find it fascinating 
And, and I think it's such a new chapter in humanity that it's, it's really great news. So I, I love what's happening with the space race. Uh, number two, uh, Facebook recently partnered up with the Ray-Ban and said that we're going to create a new product called Ray-Ban Stories uh, that will help you capture everything that's happening in front of you by wearing these glasses. You can see everything, you can record everything, and you can post it to, um, you can post it online on your Facebook account. Now, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I just find this as a big leap in social media, in connectivity, in communicating with each other, and really trying to understand how does this shape how we talk to each other? How does this shape the world that we're in, where we're constantly being recorded by someone? Imagine a world where everyone around you is, is wearing these glasses and you're on so many other video feeds of other people. And the question becomes, what is private and what is not? And it is such an interesting debate. It's just an update. I'm not talking about whether it's right or wrong, but something that's happened in the last one year. We've also had the rise of a technology called blockchain technology. And blockchain came into existence about uh, 10 or 12 years ago with the, with the launch of something called Bitcoin that we hear a lot about in the news. And in fact, I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. But blockchain technology is becoming a serious thing. A lot of companies, a lot of businesses are looking into it. Uh, it says it's going to create the end of mistrust. It's a trust enabler. And so I've been pleased with what's happening with blockchain. And we've had some major things that have emerged out of blockchain, including cryptocurrencies, non-fungible tokens, DeFi or distributed finance. And for, for us, it's really important because it's shaping the world we live in. It's shaping the future of work. It's shaping creativity. It's shaping the financial sector, how we do business. And so it's very important that we understand what it is and what it does. Let's talk about cryptocurrency, in fact. Cryptocurrencies are in the news every single day, and the rising value of Bitcoin as a currency uh, is something that none of us can ignore, right? And so this currency that came into being 12 years ago has really rapidly gained interest. Uh, in fact, over the last year, year and a half, two years, and people have been home, working from home, I think people had a lot of, we had a lot of time to think about it. Uh, but there's also this huge mass disruption that it's causing in financial circles, in the monetary system, in global trade. And I feel cryptocurrency is, is a major, major, major thing. We have to pay attention to it. But yes, in the last 12 to 24 months, it's gone wild, continues to go wild. Uh, we also have something called non-fungible tokens related to blockchain technology. But uh, an entirely new concept where you can sell digital art online and be paid in cryptocurrencies. And essentially, this, there's a new a system, a new order, a new industry that's emerging that impacts all of us. Uh, some NFT art pieces have sold for millions of dollars online uh, by auction houses, houses like Christie's and so on. And so the question becomes, what are NFTs? And why are they being sold and bought for millions of dollars, not tens and hundreds of dollars, but millions of dollars? What exactly is this and what is the opportunity, the risk and the possibilities of NFTs? I find it mind boggling. I absolutely think we all need to understand what these things are. Um, a vaccine passports, well, last one year and a half, we've seen the emergence of vaccines, vaccine passports and technology helping create this global understanding of an idea that didn't exist before, right? Remember back in the day, clinical trials and things such as, such as this took decades and ages, but now in three months, six, mo six months, things are just happening and companies and people, private sector, governments are working towards something at an unprecedented speed. I, I know many of you are potentially involved in things like this and you're doing this at work, uh, and so it's unprecedented. How have we created uh, a way to adapt and how are we growing and forging ahead? Uh, and I feel we're, we're at a good place when it comes to doing things differently, creating value, building things that help other people, and really creating a world that's much different than, than before. So wh when it's all about the new normal, I always feel we're going towards something better. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Um, 
We also have some challenging things that are happening or have happened in the last one year. The, the, the rise of things such as hacking, uh, ransomware, uh, attacks such as those that have crippled uh, economies across the world and businesses worldwide. We've had attacks on private organizations such as Casea, a large technology provider that serves hundreds and thousands of other businesses and when their systems got hacked, everybody's business was paralyzed. And this affected grocery stores in Europe. It affected small mom and pop shops, uh, large organizations. And that's the impact that ransomware and hacking uh, is, is playing in our lives. Um, a pipeline uh, got, a colonial pipeline got hacked. Uh, they got ransomware uh, a, a few months ago and they were asked for millions of dollars by the bad guys asking for money Otherwise, they would hold their computer systems hostage and not, not unlock them. And so these things have increased in their, in their veracity and volume, and they really are impacting how we do business. So we have to think differently as well. It's not just about using technology to build things and do things in a different manner, but also how do we protect ourselves? How do we create systems and things that, that create a safe environment? For, for us. And so that's been happening over the last six months. And last but not least, let's talk about the metaverse. The metaverse is fresh on the news and it's this new world where everything is virtual, where you put on a set of virtual reality glasses and you can meet people, you can do business, you can sell art, you can uh, live your life inside a video game. And the question is, is that what the future is all about. Are we all going to be living in a video game in the future? And uh, this is so new, folks, that uh, there's so much more to do. But let me tell you that the metaverse is potentially going to have a big impact on countless people in the world who'll find different ways of doing things. Businesses will get created on the metaverse and art will be sold on the metaverse. Uh, and so for me, I think this is a big, big step and we all are witness to all of these things that I just said, which makes us part of history. Uh, 20, 30, 50 years down the line, you, your kids, our, our you know, grandkids will be talking about this era and saying, hey, you, did you know that four decades ago or five decades ago, this metaverse was created and today we are at a different stage. So people will talk about this era and I really believe that we are at a really good place because we're part of this world that's becoming something different in, in, a, in a much better way. So with that, I hope I've um, created some excitement uh, about the next few minutes that I'm going to talk about. But the next few minutes are about identifying this change uh, and understanding where we're headed. Uh, we're also facing something called the great resignation, disruption in how people work and what people do for work and uh, it's creating a huge impact on organizations and businesses. But it's also changing the lives of people because now employees, professionals, qualified professionals are finding out that they can do better, that they deserve better, that they should have a balance uh, of, of their professional and personal life. And so amazing and incredible time in the world of work. I know there's more sessions around that topic later on today. So you're in for a treat, some exciting, exciting sessions about the future of work, the great resignation and so on. Um, I've been lucky enough to be part of some, uh, some, some media coverage in the past few months about the great resignation. And here's, I was talking to um, RT about the future of the trucking industry. I just wanna share this one minute clip uh, and, and we'll talk about these things uh, in, in the next few minutes. So let's watch this. Pressure. I really believe there are hundreds of new opportunities for people who are feeling the pressure of technology changing their jobs to, to change their professions, to look into a new line of work because technology has opened up a lot of different avenues for anyone who, who's looking for a different career, maybe a career with a better balance. And we saw during the pandemic that many people have said no to their jobs and they do not want to go back. The great resignation is happening right now where millions of people are resigning from their jobs. And so it is also 
an incredible time to just take a step back and think about what is the career that suits your lifestyle, your the quality of life you desire. And yes, many jobs will be changing in the next few years to the next few decades, even at a faster rate. And that's actually a good thing because we know it's happening and we can take steps right now to add skills to ourselves and to look for opportunities, create opportunities that'll work in our benefit. Gentlemen, we so it's not just the trucking industry, it's manufacturing, aviation, uh, farming, retail, healthcare, uh, transportation, name it. That industry is undergoing a change and uh, the sentiment was just in this video how that change is being seen uh, on both ends um, of the equation. So the pandemic uh, has really caused some major disturbance. It's changed the way healthcare works, uh, work from home works, education industry works, uh, how uh, finance works, how security industry works, uh, food services industries works. But you know what? We've, we've made a lot of progress because we've been able uh, to show our resilience create new systems, enable new uh, areas, or, or enable new channels. And so we are on the bounce back, uh, and I'm confident this will open up many new opportunities because as humans, as people, as a race, we are very resilient uh, and, and we absolutely love succeeding. So there's definitely hope from the future. Let's go back. Let's go back in time. This was the year 2005. 2005 was an incredible year for uh, the Christian faith in this example uh, because they had the opportunity of uh, having a new pope in place. And here is everybody at the Holy See and they're waiting for the announcement to be made. And this is such a sentimental time for them. This is an emotional time, right, for any faith, any community when something like this happens. And people are waiting. They're um, taking pictures, they've got their cameras out, they have their uh, old video cameras out, and they'll take these pictures and frame them at home and watch these videos, right, with, 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 and tell their grandkids that, hey, did you know I was here when that happened? So that's, that's the visual that you're seeing right now. A few years later, the same event had to repeat itself. A new pope had to be uh, put into uh, place for whatever reason, but now the world had completely changed because we had found something different to see the world through. And in this case, it was smartphones, it was tablets. And the way we've been seeing the world since then has not changed. This is the way we look at the world. This is the way we look at sunsets, right? We look at a sunset through our cameras and our cell phones rather than actually observing it. Um, and what was this? What was this event? And this was the change that technology brought into our lives, innovation brought into our lives, uh, the invention of a smartphone uh, brought into our lives. So unprecedented change in just five to seven years time period. And that change is continuing right now. So much so that experts predict that in the next few years, maybe a decade or a decade and a half or two decades, uh, we are going to head into something called the fifth industrial revolution. So there's four industrial revolutions that are already happening or happened and are in the process of happening. And the fifth industrial revolution will be an era where artificial intelligence technology will take over white collar and blue collar jobs. It'll completely change the way we work. And so with that, there's one thing that I, I cannot stress enough when we're thinking about the past, the present, the future, being successful, being happy, creating an imprint, you know, creating our mark, is the world we live in is undergoing an unprecedented change. And that's one thing that has been constant, that is constant, it'll, it'll forever be a constant, is change. If, if we can just relate to that right now and just take that from my session, I'll be really happy that change is permanent. Change will always keep on happening. And if this is the mindset we wake up with, uh, I really believe our lives will be much different and we'll be much happier. And so change is, is the keyword. Uh, with change, I want to talk about revolutionaries and, and show you how the world is perhaps changing uh, again. Um, revolutionaries for me are people who did something incredible, who laid down their lives for the sake of others, 
created unprecedented stories that we can we continue telling, right? So some of the people you see on the screen here are revolutionaries, in my opinion, and there's countless others that can be up here uh, on the screen. But who is the revolutionary of tomorrow and why? Uh, and you'll be surprised to know that the revolutionary of tomorrow is none other than the smart toilet. Yes, and it says it right there at the bottom, the revolution is in your bathroom. And hey, let's take a look at that, right? Virtual reality glasses, heated seats, camera system, um, what else? Speaker system, incredible hardware. Uh, it's got everything that you could desire in a toilet. But more than anything else, it got, it's got something else that adds that to value. It has an app. And that app does a lot of different things. It can do content analysis, diet suggestions. It can contact your physician, but more than anything else, it'll do something that binds us together. It can track your friends. It can track your friends. Yes, I'm not kidding. And it says it right there, it can track your friends. And friends, this thing is a revolution. If it's not a revolution, then what is it? Uh, but this is how technology is going to change our lives. And I know whenever this device is available online or on Amazon or at your nearest store, you're probably going to be the first one to buy it because it's incredible. Now, beyond, and be, you know, beyond the, the laughter and the fun, uh, this thing is a revolution because it changes the healthcare industry. It changes our access to our medical system. It changes how fast we get results from medical tests and how fast can we access those results. And so for that reason, this is literally one of those devices that will change our future uh, and, and make it you know, incredible because now healthcare is in our own hands. And so that's how the world is changing. If we look at the development of, his, uh, the development of technology over the last 100 years, going back 100 years, uh, and it's right here behind me, you'll see that the evolution of microprocessor capacity has been expanding and growing at an exponential pace. That means it's been uh, doubling, quadrupling, and more over the past uh, many, many decades. Now, they say that by the year 25, 2020, uh, 2015, uh, the capacity of microprocessors will, was that equivalent to that of a mouse. So we don't, we don't pay a lot of attention to that. They also say that by the year 2025, 2030, the capacity of a computer will be similar to that of a human being or a human mind. So essentially, our, our brain can be replaced by a computer or a computer or a technology can do the same amount of tasks that our brain can do. And this is not just a robot, but this is a, a, a convergence of different technologies, hardware technology, artificial intelligence, the internet of things, everything combined. Uh, they also say that by the year 2045, if technology continues to evolve at this pace and at this rate, the sum total of all the capacity, the computing capacity of computers will exceed that of all human beings in the world. It'll exceed that. And so our minds will not be the best uh, machines, but it'll be computers that we invented. And that era, is also termed as the singularity. It's the era where humanity doesn't know what really is happening. And many say that it'll be an, an era of confusion, an era of opportunity, uh, and so on and so forth. But it's 2045. It's still a while from now. And it's a prediction. It's not the truth. We don't know where that will be. But that's what current historical data is telling us. This is what it's telling us will happen. What you'll also notice is that the time period it has taken for different breakthroughs to take place has really rapidly decreased over the past century, right? Going from the agricultural revolution, which happened 8,000 years ago, we had the industrial revolution, we had the invention of the World Wide Web, we had the moon landing, we had um, the discovery and uh, the, uh, the, the, the decoding of the human genome. And all of these things have taken shorter and shorter and shorter amounts of time. And I talked about that earlier as well in our nine billion dollar history, uh, nine billion year history. We are just a very small fragment of time, and so much change 
has taken place in this time. I really believe that right now we're possibly amidst the biggest shift that humanity has ever seen so far and that's an incredible time. I, I really feel honored and privileged to be living in an era like this. Uh, the question becomes, what is the greatest skill that you can build today? What is it that, what is the quality that we desire or should desire that's, that's going to take us into the future? Uh, and I'm going to say this, let's take five seconds to think about it. What is it that we need to succeed tomorrow, right? Given everything that I've talked about in the last few minutes. So I, I'm going to count till three. One, two, think about it. Three, okay. Any guesses? Now, I believe the biggest change, the biggest uh, quality, the biggest adaptation that we need to have is adapting to change. How do we adapt to change? How do we find the best version of ourselves when things in the external world are changing, are shifting, are building, are growing, are disrupting? I really believe that's one skill that we need to develop to take care of everything else. In fact, organizations that are future ready, that are uh, adapting to this, this mindset of, of, of being able to withstand change or to flow with change are the ones that are successful. And there's, there's many examples of that right now. Now, in terms of technology, we talked a lot about what's happening in general, but what about actual technology? What, which ones are trending? Which ones are the hot ones? Which ones will change the world in an unprecedented way? Here are some that I believe have a high potential. Artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, the metaverse in general, big data and information in general, uh, mobility, the internet of things, all these are big, 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 massive shifts that'll change our world in more than one way. And so we have to pay attention to these if you want to be future ready, if you want to be prepared for a tomorrow where disruption will hit you as an organization, but you are ready for it. F let's focus on these. Uh, I want to talk about uh, one aspect, which is, uh, and, and I had the opportunity of being part on uh, part of a show on RT uh, recently, and we were talking about robots. With every form of kind of industrialization that we come to, there is a generation of workers that seems to be displaced by that. It may be better for future generations, but there seems to be a generation that gets displaced. Are we going to witness that with the generation that right now can't seem to find work? Of course, uh, what is happening right now is you've got literally five different generations in the workforce. Uh, you've got uh, every set of uh, the generations out there working in a, in, a, in a factory, in a company, in an organization. And what is happening is the skill set that they bring is very important to how organizations are now hiring, who are they retaining, and so on. So that's just one part of it. The other part of it is profitability. What are organizations and companies and private and other sectors looking at when it comes to making profits, delivering shareholder value? Uh, many times corporations, yes, they get blamed for, you know, not supporting workers, but this is not about not supporting workers. It's about profitability. And machines, robots, both software robots and hardware robots uh, do some tasks really incredibly, incredibly well. For example, if you look at modern warehouses today, the Amazons of the world, uh, robotics is making those warehouses work. Yes, when it comes to restaurants and serving people and, and picking up plates, that's just a very it's very early in, in early stages of that, but in a factory floor, you cannot live without robotics. So, what do the workers do? Do they do they compete with with ro robots in that case? There's no there's no competition. There is no competition because the value some robots bring to the workplace is irreplaceable, and people cannot do those tasks. Well, and so here's the, the, the big question I've had is since the onset of the pandemic and, and really about from about six months into now, we've kind of seen, you know, we see the great resignation. We see 10 million open jobs and taking the technology portion out of it. It, it feels like the workforce has changed. We, we call it kind of a, a transition in the economy almost as people are able to telework, as, as people are able to kind of be where they want to be. Some people even realized, hey, I can stay home with the kids. My husband or wife could go to work and, and that is okay these days because we were able to figure it out during the pandemic and we could continue
continue that going. So has that workforce changed in your opinion? I think uh, the other side of the great resignation is the great realization where workers are finding out that they're worth more, they can do more, uh, and they should take care of their health, mental health, physical health, and you know spend more time with family. I think it's a great time for people to do what they really want to do and to work the way that they really want to do and, and support their families and so on. And so friends, that's my perspective. I really believe that even though we are in a mega shift, even though there's much a huge disruption that's taking place, it's an era to change ourselves. It's, a, it's an era for transformation. You always find me saying the positive side of things, of course, with the risks and everything involved. I really believe that we have the potential and the capacity to do better, to change things better, and, and to, to make the world a better place. And we've done that consistently throughout the ages. Why not now, right? Why not now? Uh, let me talk about some technology mega trends. I talked about technological areas that are going to be important, but there are specific technology mega trends I want to talk to you about that will help you maybe uh, distill it better. So here we are. We're living in an era where uh, technology is using algorithms, and algorithms are is literally the programming that helps machines make decisions, that helps computers think that powers your Google search. Google works on an algorithm to fetch you the best results. Uh, Alexa works on an algorithm. Siri works on an algorithm to provide you with the results. Now, if you have one of the newer cars, you'll see that the car is more of a computer than a car. That entire car runs on algorithms. So algorithms are very, very important. Uh, and I believe that we're headed more into the era where the world will be managed by algorithms. In fact, so much so that people say that if the world, uh, if all the algorithms in the world stopped right now, the world as we know it would stop. So algorithms are really important. Please pay attention to what they are, how they work, and we don't have time to do that today, but it's a hugely important area that I would want you to check out. We also have something called a convergence, and convergence is when different things come together. And right now, what is, is, is happening is the convergence of technologies. Artificial intelligence technology is coming together with the Internet of Things technology, is coming together with blockchain technology, and many other things are coming together to change the world. I mentioned earlier robots and how robots will change our lives, but these robots are not just hardware devices. They are a convergence of different technologies come together, and so very important to understand how that works. Next one up is decentralization. And decentralization can be done in many different ways. And right now, what uh, is primarily powering it is blockchain technology. Decentralization is about eliminating a central authority. It's about creating freedom of choice. It's about a peer-to-peer connection rather than all of us going and connecting at a certain place. And so decentralization is playing a big part when it comes to finance, when it comes to banking, when it comes to information security, information storage, sharing of private data, healthcare. And so decentralization, in my opinion, will change many different things, and we have to pay attention to it. Whatever industry you're in, start finding out about decentralization and how it changes maybe your industry and what you do specifically. There's also a push towards going uh, and making things experiential. I'm a part of a, an initiative by the government of the UAE called uh, GX, and it's called Government Experience. And so even governments are going through the experiential route where they want to create experiences when they are serving their citizens, their, their residents, when they're going to renew their driver's license or pet license or what have you. Uh, and so start thinking about what role does experiences do experiences and this experiential living have in your industry. Maybe you're in retail, maybe you're in food services. Uh, and what role does experiential play internally and externally? There are many, many fascinating things about it. I really believe it's very important for us to focus on this. Next one up is mobility. Now we all have mobile phones, hopefully uh, there's many people across the world that have mobile phones, and there's a big push for services to become mobile, uh, things to be available mobile, right? Ten years ago, banking was not mobile, and nobody had mobile banking. 
But now banks are mobile, money transfer is mobile, communication is mobile, uh, entertainment is mobile. So all of these things are turning mobile. And it's not just your mobile device, but the ability to go and work anywhere, the ability to use technology to, to cut, you know, not, not go into the office, but to work from somewhere else. And so mobility has a big, big shift and a big push on how we live and how we work, and it will continue to grow. Uh, next one up is tokenization. Tokenization very much related to the idea of decentralization, to non-fungible tokens, to cryptocurrencies. But tokenization is how do we break something up and individually be part of those smaller pieces. In New York recently, a few months ago, a large multi-million dollar property was sold after it was tokenized. It was literally broken down into small financial portions and individual people could buy those portions rather than buy the whole big large property. And that idea of tokenization is really how do we use digital money to break things down into smaller pieces so that they can be spread out and people can be part of those investments. Still early stages in terms of uh, rollout, in terms of adaptation, uh, but I think tokenization has a huge potential and it might create havoc on some industries, but also create opportunity in many others. I was recently on uh, the BBC and I was sharing something about cryptocurrencies and tokenization and NFTs. I just want to play this clip for you just to show you uh, what kind of things is mainstream media covering? What kind of questions are being asked? And, you know, generally what we need to pay attention to. Yeah, what would you say to people who say, well, you know, what, what is this? How can I trust it? I can't touch it. I can't see it. You know, you hear about all these scams, people losing their money, especially when they lose their, their code to get their accounts. Um, what would you say to those people? Well, I would say that uh, their right to be hesitant and their right to be cautious, there's, there's no problem with that. But I also uh, encourage people to go out there and get more information on what cryptocurrencies are, how they work, why do they function the way they do, and what is the future of finance. I believe cryptocurrency would have a huge impact on the future of finance and how we do things in, uh, in the future. Um, and that's why we have a new documentary called uh, The Bitcoin Dilemma. Okay, Ian Khan, thank you very much. And so many different opinions on the rise of cryptocurrency, the rise of new financial systems, uh, and so on. There's people on both sides of the argument talking about the pros and the cons. Uh, my advice and my guidance is start getting involved in just listening to what's happening and, and paying attention to what is everybody talking about and why. So go out and question people on what they're saying and why they're saying that. Uh, there's so much happening, folks. I, I, I wish we had a lot more time for me to some, share some of these things. But here's what I want to conclude with. I want to conclude with the formula, the, the, the strategy, the art of future readiness. I really believe the, the future demands impeccable leadership from all of us right now, right this second, and it's demanding that we hold ourselves responsible for creating success. Uh, I have a framework that we've created at our organization called the Future Readiness Score, the Future Readiness Framework, that helps organizations understand where they are with respect to future readiness and where they should be and how they can get there. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about some of those elements and what we find in our organization, looking at more than 200 different independent studies and research to figure out what is important and what makes us future ready and what can help us lead in a new way. The first element of future readiness is the E, and E stands for many things. It's engagement, experiences, the expression of who you are, and it covers many core things of business, sales, marketing, public relations, media, communications in general, a brand management. And so the era that we're in right now has this huge focus on the E. We have to master everything under the E and, and only then will we be completely able to be future ready. And it's an important piece, an integral piece of future readiness. Number two is to become a lifelong learner. You have to start learning new things on a daily basis. If you're questioning things and you're confused, it means you're not ready, you're not learning, you're not investing time and energy effort in, in, in yourself. So 
Right now, organizations need to support their employees and get them to learn more. You as an individual need to start learning more. You as a team manager and as a community need to start learning more. And this is it. This is the era of learning. And unless you're a, 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 a someone who's constantly focusing on it, it's going to be difficult to be competitive to succeed. So please start learning things in a structured way and start learning right now. Uh, number three, people. People should be at the core of everything that you do internally, externally. We have to align ourselves with how important people are and how to drive people, how to the, get the best out of people and how to offer the best to our customers and our stakeholders. We now have five generations, five different generations in the workforce and all of them have different needs and requirements and wants. How do we best manage all of them? How do we get the millennials to work with the Gen Zs, to work well with the Gen X and so on and so forth? People are at the core of every business and we have to master working with people. Next one up is accountability. I cannot stress enough how important accountability is, but many organizations don't pay attention to this and we feel that uh, accountability is something that people should have and why don't they have it? But, but there's literally a process of creating accountability in your organization. And research has found that if you create an atmosphere of accountability, you'll be a much more successful organization than anybody else. And there's ways to do that. And this is leadership. This is top, top down. Uh, if you're accountable as a leader, the people that work for you will start becoming more accountable. Uh, we really feel at Future Receive that this is one of the traits of future readiness or organizations and individuals have to adapt to this. Uh, next one up is a culture and culture is beyond just having free snacks, free food or having a Christmas party at the end of the year. But culture is more about what golden thread is common between everybody at your workplace. What do people think of when they're going to work, when they know they're going to meet a customer? Who, who do your employees feel that they represent? What idea do they think they represent when they're going meeting people or having a call? And that's what culture is all about. Culture feeds into accountability. Culture feeds into the E that we talked about uh, as point number one. It feeds into everything else. And it's really important to focus on culture and to build it so that people that work for you, people that work within the organization, absolutely do their best and you're serving your customers and clients in the best possible way. And in a community, when you have a culture within a community, you're serving everybody else that's related to that community in an incredible way as well. And that's, that's what culture stands for. The next one up is collaboration or partnerships. Now, in today's era, we absolutely cannot do things on our own. And unless you are collaborating and partnering up with the right people, with people who are focused on the vision and the mission that you have, and those are the right people, uh, you're, you're not going to succeed. It's going to be difficult. You're going to be going against the grain if you don't have the right partnerships and collaborations. And so for that reason, please start investing in the right partnerships, in the right value proposition, in the right uh, process, and in the right companies and, and vendors who, who, who really understand your mission and your vision. And that's how collaboration works. So very important to succeed is collaboration. And last but not least, friends, is what makes it all possible is implementation, is execution, is going beyond the boardroom, uh, going beyond the meetings that you've had, and actually doing the things that you've said you're going to do. It's delivering the goods. It's, it's creating that actual impact and tracking that data and tracking that information with metrics. Execution makes everything possible, but many companies fall weak when it comes to execution. And this is one of those disciplines that you constantly have to be on top of. You constantly have to chase yourself on delivering. And so uh, execution is so high uh, in, in its importance. And all of these points that I talked about uh, are, are absolutely important in order to become a future ready organization. Now you might ask, what's the role of technology in all of this and what happened to technology? And well, technology can help you at different places, 
different parts to all of these pieces and it can facilitate things for you. It can help you make things more efficient, get business to run faster and at a more incredible speed. But technology is not going to solve any of your problems if your foundation is not right. And these things are all the foundational pillars that you must get right if you want to be future ready. With that, friends, uh, here's my recommendation on some reading. If you want to focus on these uh, different points I talked about, get going and start reading one or more of these books. It's my recommendations of some good stuff that I've come across over the past few uh, years. Uh, more books on my website at iancon.com and you can see there's a book uh, section there where I recommend different books. And so please start reading and investing your time into these books, energy, uh, your energy into these uh, resources to learn more. And uh, you also uh, can get a free copy, a free signed copy of my upcoming book, uh, The Art of Future Readiness, that's coming out next year. You can sign up to receive a copy uh, at the URL on the screen. And so with that, friends, this is the end of my session with you today. I hope I've pointed you in the right direction. I hope I've nudged you into uh, a place where you can say, hey, I know exactly what we should be doing, or I really understand that this change is going to happen to our lives and these are the steps that I potentially should be taking. Uh, and so if that's happening to you right now, then that's a great thing to be. Uh, I am going to be in the speaker lounge later on. I'll also be taking questions. Uh, and uh, so it's a really a pleasure to be here and an honor to be here in front of you. Enjoy the conference, ask questions, meet as many people as you can uh, in, in the different lounges and networking areas. And feel free to ask me any question and, and send me your contact details if you want to. Grab a copy of my book and thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure. My name is Ian Khan. Please take care.